Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Lindy, and I have a passion for all things hair, career, entrepreneurship, and I share a little bit about each one of those things here on my channel. So if you are new, welcome. Thank you for being here. In today's video, I am going to be introducing to you part one of a two-part series I'm creating on what I wish I would have known and done as a booth renter when I first started my career as a hairstylist. If you don't know, as a hairstylist, you can be commissioned, you can be commissioned in salary, you can be booth renter, you can be a salon owner. There's a lot of different options, and I've chosen the route of being a booth renter for the last five years. So I have learned a lot of things that I wish I would have known and I wish I would have implemented but time tells all and you learn as you go so I want to share with you those things that I wish I would have known just in case you are in a similar situation and you're starting your journey as a hairstylist or you're trying to figure out what you want to do with your journey so in this video I'm gonna go into what I wish I would have known when I first started my journey as a booth renter before we get started if you like this video make sure you give it a thumbs up below and if you want to see more videos to come and you want to see part two of this series make sure you hit the subscribe button below as well okay Let's get started. I have four major points for you guys. Number one, as a booth renter, I am my own business. That title holds a lot of weight. And when I first started out, you know, I thought about the fact that I'd have to pay my own taxes, I'd price my own services, I'd bring in my own clientele, all these like little things, but I never really carried the responsibility of a business owner. I didn't really take into account that I don't get to just go to work at 9 a.m. and leave at five and forget about work. But as a business owner, I actually have to think about the future and I have to plan and I have to strategize and I have to do a lot of extra work that isn't just going to work, showing up and going home. As a business owner, I was the creator of my own success. If I sat around and I did nothing, that is the result that I would get nothing i wouldn't get new clients in the door i surely wouldn't build my retention rate which means clients wouldn't necessarily want to come back to me because i wasn't thinking ahead of asking the questions like what do my clients need what kind of experience do i want to provide as a stylist for my clients what marketing should i be doing so that people can really get to know me before they actually come and sit in my chair as a booth renter i had to think about those things because i am in charge of my own success and if i don't put the work in i'm not going to have clients clientele so no one really gets to tell you what to do with your business you decide that for yourself and so as you can see there is a lot of weight that comes with this title it is amazing though like if this is something that you wanted to do it's totally worth it it's awesome I'm my own boss and I'm in charge of my own success so I wish I would have taken that a little more seriously and really been knowledgeable about what I was getting into when I first started as a booth renter. Number two is I wish I would have known that my clientele will not build overnight. Until you actually go through the process of building a clientele, it's hard to know like really how much work it takes and how much patience it takes, how much grit it takes because it doesn't happen overnight and there is a lot of waiting around. There's a lot of doing things that you don't see immediate results with and that can be really discouraging, really disheartening. But I didn't really know going into it that it was gonna take so long. I kind of found out through the experience. With that, I lost a lot of confidence because I thought I was doing something wrong. This slow pace, this people coming and maybe not coming back the first time or you know sitting in the salon waiting for walk-ins and some days you don't get any at all. I wish I would have known that that was a normal part of this journey and starting out. As a booth renter, the salon doesn't actually bring in clients for you, so you're responsible for all your own. If you were to start out as commission or commission and salary, typically the salon you work for will be marketing you, marketing the salon in general. They'll be bringing clients in for you, but as a booth renter, it's not like that at all. You are responsible for your clients. I probably would have had a lot more confidence in my abilities and in just the process that it takes to get busy if I would have known that it takes takes time and really I think know how many clients it actually takes to be busy because if you think about it you kind of need like three batches of clients you know someone comes in for a root touch-up and they might come in every four to six weeks so you see that person one day and then you don't see them for another four to six weeks so all those days and weeks in between 
have to be full with people and so it really takes a lot of time to just kind of build up those batches of people and word spreads by you know people referring you you marketing yourself which I'll get into it doesn't just happen in one day I knew that it wasn't gonna happen instantly after I left school but I did think that it was gonna happen a lot faster than it did so it led to a lot of discouragement so looking back I think I would have gone in a little bit more mentally prepared and said okay I know this is gonna take a while what do I need to do do I need to pick up a second job or do I just push through it and be slow and live on a tight budget you know consider all these things but having that mindset already going into it saying this is normal it's gonna take a while keep working at it it will come so number three is I wish I would have known that I was gonna to need to market myself and I was gonna to need to know how to do it well as a business owner, you are a walking advertisement, especially if you're in the beauty industry. The way that you take care of yourself and the way that you come across to people is really going to either propel your business forward or it's going to stop it dead in its tracks and it's not gonna help you out at all in building a clientele. I kind of went into booth rental with the vision that word of mouth was gonna build my clientele and it was gonna spread the news about me doing hair in town. But what I didn't realize is that me putting myself out there on social platforms was also super, super important. I didn't start a Facebook page and I never had a hair Instagram until recently, but I didn't start a hair Facebook page until my now husband <laughs> told me that I should. So therefore, people didn't know what I could do. They didn't know the work that I could do. They had no idea anything about me. They were really going off a whim and just trusting someone else's opinion, which can be valuable, but they didn't know who I was coming into it. So I have found that marketing yourself well online is actually super, super beneficial to your client's first experience with you because they actually know kind of who you are coming into it. The other side is I had to learn that it was worth putting the money into the education to better myself, whether that's hair skills or social media marketing. I actually, quick story, worked for my dad for two years as a marketing doing marketing for his company. And I learned a lot in those two years. I had a lot of time to research and to learn and educate myself and that's exactly what I did. Now today, I listen to podcasts all the time. I follow people that are experts in social media marketing and I really try to take in all the information that I can and actually do it because it works. These people have done it themselves. They're teaching it for a reason. So I have really learned now that I need to market myself and not only the way that I come across as a walking advertisement when people meet me in person, but also online. My online presence is super, super important and valuable to my potential customers. So I really wish I would have known that I was going to need to market myself in this way, but I have learned along the way and I just wanted to share that with you and hopefully that will inspire you to really market yourself proudly from the start, build your portfolio. People are looking, they want to see what you can do and they wanna know that they can trust you. The fourth thing that I wish I would have known was to choose a salon very, very wisely. Of course, I'm not upset about the salon that I was at back home. I worked at my aunt's salon. She was the owner. She was amazing. I loved the environment of the place, but I didn't really have much knowledge about what to look for. It's really important when you choose a salon to look for the location first and foremost. Is it an essential spot that has walk-ins, that's well known, that's desired around the town, that's talked about? Out really well what's the location like is it hidden from everything or is it right there for everyone to see as they drive by because if you're new and you're waiting there for walk-ins but your salon is really hidden chances are high that you probably won't get very many walk-ins so look for something that has a really good location the other thing that I wish I would have known to look for is just what are the girls like that you work with? Are they super supportive? Are they on the same track as you as far as chasing after your goals? Are they more lackadaisical? Is that what you want? You know, do you want someone that's going to push you to go forward and to do better? Or do you, are you okay with people that are just content in their business the way that it is and just kind of go day to day and enjoy the day? And then what's the vibe of the salon when you walk in? Because that's exactly what your clients and future clients are going to be walking into. So it's super important to know and decide what do you want for the vibe? 
vibe of your salon. It's really going to impact your client experience and it's going to impact your reputation. So look for those things when you choose a salon. I didn't really know. I just kind of went for it and I'm again, I didn't make a mistake or anything when I chose my first salon, but I think that I could have probably gone into it with a lot more knowledge of what to look for and why that's important. That is it for part one of this two-part series that I'm creating and I really hope that it was helpful to you in one way or another, whether you're a hairstylist just starting out or if you're a commission stylist and you're thinking about doing booth renting or if you're none of that at all, I hope that you somewhat enjoyed this video. But either way, I wanted to share the things that I didn't know going into my career as a booth renter that I definitely could have used before I just jumped in head first. So as I've learned throughout my career, I wanted to share that with you. And again, I hope that it was helpful in one way or another. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching again. And if you are interested in part two, stay tuned. It's coming up next week on Wednesday. I post a video every Wednesday here on my channel and I hope to see you back then. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you on the next one.